come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Hello, my fellow Earthlings, and thank you. We just want to take a moment to thank you for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. Oh, thank you. A movie review podcast where every week a movie is chosen round robin and talked about ad nauseum for your listening pleasure and enjoyment. You can find our back catalog of 261 episodes (laughs) on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, TuneIn, Google Play, wherever you found us, please give us a like, follow us, subscribe, because all of that helps us get found through algorithms. You know how that stuff works. Cast roller. (laughs) Remember the old cast roller, Pod Bay FM. Uh, Pod Bay, yes. Uh, and, uh, so who are, let's introduce your Saturday night freak show starting lineup. Holly. Sean. Michaela. And I'm Colin. Also known as the internet radio superstars. <laughs> yes. right. We have uh, many different I names. like the lineup though. It felt like 1992 boys. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, nice. Yeah. Mix it up. All right. Maybe we'll do that. Uh, and tonight's <laughs> movie was chosen by. Michaela. Michaela. What did we watch tonight? We watched Buried, or for our Canadian listeners, Buried. <laughs> buried. <laughs> buried. <laughs> buried, eh? Yeah. Oh, he got buried. <laughs> Get buried. Oh, buried. He got buried a lot, eh? Yeah. Uh, this is from the year. 2010. And it's directed by... Rodrigo Cortez. So this is a Spanish film. Mm-hmm. Shot and made in Barcelona. Uh, Ryan Reynolds was the only English-speaking person in the entire production of the film. Uh, That's the- fine. Only uh, no, person okay. in the entire yeah. production of the film. Yep. What's his so, name's English speaking? Although he's only on the phone. That's a post, yep. post production. Yeah. Yep. Well, that's post, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. As, in, as in the onset crew, he was the only English speaking person. Yeah. Onset yeah. cast. Yeah. Being yeah. one. Mm-hmm. Being. Are we going to say who the entirely other Canadian is? cast Steven, guys? Stephen Tobolowski. Yeah. Tobolowski. 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 Yeah. An entire Canadian cast. Entirely Canadian cast. And it wasn't filmed in Canada. No. Wow. Canada. It's impressive. So all the ADR work was done in Canada. No, I'm joking because Ryan Reynolds is Canadian. <laughs> oh, and he was the only actor on set, guys. It was a joke. Oh, yeah. So Rodrigo Cortez, uh, this guy, I'm familiar with his work a little bit uh, as a producer because he did a movie called, he produced a movie called Apartment 143, mm-hmm. which is a horror movie. It's not too bad. It's like a found footage kind of exorcism thing. And he also produced. You described 50 movies. Yeah, right. Yeah. I was like, from the that, year 2010 on. Is that the Jim Carrey movie? The John Cusack movie? This yeah. A, a Spanish... That's an evil fucking room, room 1408 or something. Yeah. The number well, 23. It's interesting that you say John Cusack because he also produced a movie called Grand Piano. Mm. Oh, I still haven't seen that. You told me to watch that. You should check that yeah. one out. It's not because uh, when I heard that uh, you were bringing Buried, I'm like, oh, that's from the guy who did Grand Piano, but it turns mm-hmm. out he just produced it. But that's another. Is that Daniel Radcliffe? It's uh, Elijah Wood. Elijah Wood. Oh, yeah, you did mention that. Yeah. Yeah. He's got to play a piano, hey, no. and John Cusack Sorry. is the assassin I love with them the, both. Uh, huh. the rifle pointed at his head. Ooh. All right. So the whole thing takes place in a confined space, being a you mm-hmm. know, theater. Oh. Uh, Rodrigo What's your favorite Cortez. confined space movie? That's that's almost like a trick question because, like, I feel like there Some are one man cheap. show movies that fall into this kind of category, True. but yeah. don't take it to the level this movie does. No, this yeah. is uh, like on a separate like lock, level. like with Lock, Tom Hardy, lock, lock, or like Moon, or Moon, Moon. Moon is a, I still haven't seen that. Don't yeah. say anything. <laughs> Did well, I think it was spoiled the, uh, for us at one point. Uh, not me. I don't know anything about it. Oh, okay. Right. Don't say anything. anything. There's a movie Sorry. on uh, Netflix right now starring Frank Grillo. It's called Wheel Man. The whole mm-hmm. thing takes place in a car. Oh, kind of nice. like Locke, except it's in a, the action movie sure. variant. Mm-hmm. Locke is not. Castaway? Uh, beautiful movie, though. Beautiful. Castaway is the one. If that's the one. You're saying this is a new genre we're like discovering? Like the one-man show? The one-man yeah. show? Yeah. 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 Castaway? Yeah. I mean, it's not... I wouldn't say confined. No. Castaway is not... Most of it's a one-man show. Yeah. 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 We get into the non-one-man show stuff later on in the hours. Yeah. I walks, I would, it walks the, the Shallows. Line. The Shallows, The yeah. Shallows, yeah. 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 Yep. It's very true. Mm-hmm. So these are movies where the burden of the, the, the whole movie basically falls to one person who's basically on screen from the minute one to mm-hmm. the end. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Bell to bell. Yeah. yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Bell to bell? Bell to bell. Nice. I yep. said build a bear. <laughs> build a bear. <laughs> bell to bell. So it's bell to bell movies or one man show movies. From start yeah. to finish. Mm-hmm. All right. Mm-hmm. It's not uncommon to what people do on stage every once in a while. They have yeah. one man shows yeah. where they get up there and Yikes. Yeah. 
That's mm-hmm. usually a ego stroke more than anything. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Cortez also did a movie called Red Lights with Robert De Niro. I looked huh. up his filmography. I know nothing Killian Murphy. about the movies he's made. I saw that he did one with De Niro and Killian Murphy. I'm just like, yeah. I've never heard of this movie. De Niro was a magician. And Killian Murphy. I'm sorry. Weaver. That's all you needed to say. Well, he's, he's blind. He's a blind magician. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm that's in. all you needed to I'm say. In. A blind uh, magician. Well, no, no, sorry. Not a magician. He's a he's a psychic reader. <laughs> I'll take right? it. He goes I'll around. Take oh it. my god. <laughs> I'll take it. I was like, it. he's a blind gay magician. I'm just like, <laughs> okay, yes. This definitely came on the early aughts, right? Like it had to have been right around prestige illusionist time, right? It was after this. So After this, also yeah. linked to the game. Yeah, because it was an American production. Ah. Uh, Rodrigo, uh, Rodrigo came over here. Wait, what's and, it called? And it. Uh, Red Lights. Red Lights. Yeah. All right. But it wasn't as good as I was saying, hoping it would be. Aww. I mean, the trailers made it look like really intriguing and all this. I mean, there's saying. nothing you can say that's going to bring that down for right. us. Yeah. So you got to check that it out. Rocketed blind to the top of my psychic. blind gay magician. I'm in, dude. Where'd the gay part come I, from? I'm pretty sure that in there. He was gay in Stardust. I don't know if you saw that. He was. That was fabulous. Is that, the, is that Ricky Gervais in that one as well? Yeah. M- Michelle like, Pfeiffer? Yeah, big yeah, cast. Okay, yeah, yeah. Big, big cast. cast in that one. Yeah, I oh, love that Oh, that's like yeah. one of those, uh, not Chronicles of Narnia. What was the other like one that Princess was out Bride, at the... Like like... Yeah. But it's like sci-fi-ish. It's like fantastic yeah. sci-fi, Golden yeah. Compass and that came out like oh, a week it, apart uh, or something like that. I think like it's that. Compass. Compass. Oh, God. Sorry, staring up bad. Yeah. <laughs> polar bears in that movie. It's also Nicole Kidman and Daniel Craig having, being cardboard... Cutouts of themselves. Oh, God. No, I, I would you have not. to specify which movie. I would, yeah, exactly. Yeah, right? Yeah. There's, there's I would by no means compare Stardust to that fucking movie. <laughs> no. Princess Bride, I would compare it to that movie. Saoirse Ronan's also in Golden Compass. She escaped that, unfortunately. <sighs> which but, one is yeah. Sam Elliott in? I don't remember. Okay. Mm hmm. Don't remember. You don't have an answer for that? No, I'm not sure. He's I remember in one he's in, he's in one of those of movies. But, ah. Yeah. He could have been the Golden Compass for all yeah, I know. I think well, it's Golden Compass. Is there a cowboy in one of them? He's not in. Doesn't <laughs> always have Sam to play a cowboy. Like, he's a cowboy in this. He's a cowboy in everything. Yeah. Okay. So this movie. Buried. This movie. Buried, yeah. which we watched this evening. Mm-hmm. Uh, First of all, I do have to issue an apology. During this movie, I had an outburst where I told Michaela I hated her. <laughs> and I did it's not okay. mean that, and I'm sorry. <laughs> Well, I know you were caught up in the movie. I was. And I'm glad that the movie was able to do that to you, if that makes um, sense. I'm not like, glad that this movie did the things to me that it did, <laughs> but still, apologies. Well, this movie plays on uh, the the uh, claustrophobia. Yep. Right? Because the gist of it is if you if you don't if you don't know what this movie is about, Ryan Reynolds is a American contractor in Iraq who wakes up buried in a coffin. And the entire movie takes place thing. in a coffin. Now you say, how is this possible? It's possible. How can you shoot an entire movie in a coffin? Because, uh, as you mentioned, phone booth earlier, it's like, it's got glass walls. Mm-hmm. You can shoot through it. You can yeah, shoot a wide shot people. from down yeah, the there's, block. there's people there's around other it. characters. Just like 127 yeah. Hours, like, I feel like that's the watered down version of this movie because 127 hours like yeah it's Franco with his arm stuck under a rock but he has like hallucinogenic flashbacks where you Mm. see other actors and you see Mm. other scenes so like there's very little time spent with him actually in that rock because of the flashbacks and stuff that's why why I really compare it I mean not totally but to Locke because it's just in the car just in the car Yeah. yeah that's why like I think that like I think 127 hours got more praise than it deserved because it it played it safe. I thought with that premise by doing that, you know, yeah. I felt like if you're really gonna be daring and really push it, you go yeah. the buried route, you yeah. know. Whereas 127 hours was like, oh, Franco's not gonna be able to carry this, so let's cut to like a flashback of his family. Did he like, get an Oscar nom for that movie? Yeah. Yeah. How do you? How do you? I'm sorry. That movie got lots of Oscar nominations. I'm sorry. How does that movie? get so much attention in a movie and I'm going to keep bringing it up a lot besides Buried Mm -hmm. Locke how does Locke get mostly ignored it did win a few LA Critics Association awards Mm because they all fucking loved Locke but how does that movie get ignored with a performance I guess maybe Frank was his flashier and he does spoiler alert cut off his ham Oh, Danny it was Boy, Danny Boy, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah, that's, why. that's true. And I think it was yeah. not long after Slumdog, so that Probably. was like, it's still it's in the public consciousness. That's unfortunate. Yeah. It's such bullshit, though, because, I mean, Tom Hardy's performance is mm-hmm. fantastic. Fantastic. Mm-hmm. If you have not so seen great. Locke. 
Uh, yeah, Go I highly watch recommend them. Locke. Mm-hmm. Well, Locke and Buried, I guess, share a similar. Uh, the The way that you open the movie up, right, <laughs> is uh, <laughs> you have the 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 fact that they have cell phones, right? Yeah, yeah. allows you to even though you're trapped in one location with this person, uh, the world of the movie is actually fairly large. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, because I think that's the same thing with Locke. There's something that's going on, like when you think about that movie later in your mind, you see other scenes. Yes. that yeah. aren't actually in. The the movie like in 127 hours they dramatize those mm-hmm. yeah it's in, in a really cheesy way it's right. bad they yeah, dramatize the them and they show them to you yeah. Yeah. they literally These show them play, like, like let give them to you and you know this is where your imagination gets to like right. fill in all that stuff and you get to see them in your head yeah it's really lovely the way like we're still talking about lock oh we're gonna talk about yeah. lock <laughs> it's, it's, That's a it's, fucking no, great it's movie. No, it's really, it's really lovely. Like the way he calls home, and you can hear his sons watching soccer. And yeah. it's 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 gorgeous. Like you can yeah. really see it. It's and it's just the sound. It's just the noise. And fun fact: that's Tom Holland that plays his son. Yes, it is. Oh shit! You know what? This all I was trying to think of like the earliest thing. You ever seen a movie called My Dinner with Andre? Yes, yes. I yes. love that yes. movie. <laughs> All right, so there's two yes. guys go to dinner. I have not seen it, <laughs> that but is, I know. Have, you've I know watched the Community, whole, right? No, the, the, this the I episode know. Yes. Of the My yeah. Dinner with Andre episode of Community. Yes, yeah. 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 This I know, yeah. and I know who's in it. Yeah. As we were talking about Princess Bride earlier. Right. Mm-hmm. Yep. So I know the premise, and I know who's in the movie. I still have never it's seen good, it. It's good, man. It is it's good. It's good. All for it. it hurts a little bit, but it's good. <laughs> yeah, they but all it's hurt. A, it's kind of amazing yeah. because it's the, all of these movies that we're talking about kind of use uh, cinema, which you you know, there's something about being cinematic. You're kind of you're you're taking places, people to new places, and seeing things, and you know, opening up worlds. But they're basically doing stuff with uh, conversation. Right. Yeah. And just language yeah. right. uh, is like the driving force of painting mental pictures for the audience, because what mm-hmm, we're looking right. at is Ryan Reynolds in a box. And literally from the like first minute of the movie, he is in the box. You don't mm-hmm. see him get put in the box. You don't see any flashback to yep. what happened before he went in the box. Yep. It is. We are an hour and a half with Ryan Reynolds Literally in him in the box. It's okay. all So for the person out there who's going like, that sounds like the most boring movie ever ever made how do they you know overcome just uh you know having a movie with a guy talking to himself or talking on the phone props Mm -hmm. (laughs) this movie has more plot twists than you can possibly imagine for its premise this movie has an action scene in the middle of it oh it does does. (laughs) it really it does (laughs) you're like how does that possible it was wonderful yeah (laughs) Yeah, no if you think this sounds boring trust me there are more plot twists than you could possibly imagine i was fucking hooked this yeah i was the only one who hasn't seen this i was the only one who hasn't seen it and i lost my fucking mind Mm -hmm. several times that because we kind of fucked with it at the beginning and it came true in the middle (laughs) yeah Yeah. (laughs) damn it i forgot well no let's just lay it on the table i have anxiety i have intense claustrophobia and a serious fear of snakes and this checked all those boxes that's the summary of this movie (laughs) anxiety claustrophobia and snakes well and like i had seen it before and i knew where it was going but like the climax of the movie still like makes my heart like race a little bit just because like you know where it's going but it takes too long to get there you know it takes so long to get there at the end Mm. even though you know where it's going and it just that's the point is to make you feel that way and i think it's pretty incredible a movie can make you feel that way i love that ryan reynolds has anxiety in this movie like yes. he actually has yes. anxiety and takes pills for it. Yeah, <laughs> that's uh, that's pretty good. Well, and this we should point out too. This came out in 2010, so this was the no one was taking Ryan Reynolds seriously at this point in mm. time. Like we didn't respect him at all. <laughs> like, I did. Damn it, I saw Amityville Horror. I'm not saying the movie's well, good, but, but no, well, no, I respect him for. I mean, what he he's did good in that movie. movie. He's no. great, but but just for perspective, the movie right before this was Adventureland, which he was great in, and that was he a good was movie. great. I love that, that movie. movie. I love that movie. But okay, so this movie came out after that, and then. The two movies that immediately followed this were The Change Up and Green Lantern. Jesus Christ. Dear so, <laughs> not a great time in the Ryan Reynolds. This the, is not post Deadpool Ryan Reynolds. I was going to say, what's the, what's, the, what's the time frame between this and Van Wilder? Oh, we know Jesus. that. Hold Van on, Wilder was like, I'm looking it up right now. I'm looking it up right now. Is oh, it, God, it's no, a lot. It's longer than that. Oh, wait. Yeah. First of all, can we all appreciate Ryan Reynolds and Smoking Aces? I'm just going yeah. to put that out there. Yeah, for sure. Ryan Reynolds and Smoking in Aces. Prom- in the promos for this movie, they mentioned that. Like in the trailers for this, they were like, from Smoking Aces and like a couple other things, but that they mentioned that in the promotion of this movie. So. They probably should. Smoking Aces mm-hmm. is the first time I saw in an, an emotional Ryan Reynolds. I don't know if you remember that movie. Like, he becomes the main character and probably the last half hour of that movie because mm-hmm. it's it's an ensemble piece and there's a lot of people in it. And the last half hour becomes his story mm-hmm. and it ends with a, 
an, an emotional scene in a hospital that I still go back and watch because of the way he acts it out and everything. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's, you know, it showed something about Ryan Reynolds that I think that maybe nobody knew he was capable of doing at that point. Because mm-hmm. that movie's from right. 2006. Well, he's primarily, he was, like, when he, he started out. I mean, uh, yeah, he was a comedy actor. He was Waiting and Van Wilder. And was there something? Two guys, like, a girl in a pizza place? Yeah. These are the movies that established who his persona was. Yeah. You know? right. And he's a really funny actor. Like, he's legitimately, yeah. Yeah. you Can know, Can I just take a second and share my first introduction to Ryan Reynolds? Oh, here we sure. go. It was in the 90s. And every Monday night, there was a feature movie on the Lifetime channel. And there was a love... <laughs> and there was a movie was called... Was it Boltnik? There was a movie called A Secret Between Friends, about two girls that battled bulimia. <laughs> and Ryan Reynolds was the love interest. <laughs> a moment of truth movie in 1996. He played Ben Coulson. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, he's... <laughs> He yeah, was, no. This he was, was also in the original TV movie Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Mm-hmm. He was. He was in Dick. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. But Van Wilder was probably his biggest that one was in two thousand two, and then he did. Oh, let's see. Let's look at. It. He had a little piece in Harold and Kumar, which I'll never forget. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, you're glistening. Mm-hmm. <laughs> when it was waiting. Waiting. Was well, like hold on, hold on. We got we get Blade Trinity in t- Blade Trinity oh. in two thousand four. Yeah. yeah. Well, so that's, well, that's that's kind a, of a more jump. serious yeah. role. That's yeah. a jump. That was a surprising part for him back then. Right. Very uh, I remember, well, yeah. Amityville Horror was in 2005. Is, yep. He's good in that. He's good in yeah, that. I like him. That. After that is Waiting. That's his next movie. Waiting, oh. yeah. Which was just that's one of my Somewhere favorite movies. Just Friends. just Friends is next, which I fucking love. That movie's just Friends hilarious. Is, is, just Friends funny. is fucking yeah. hilarious. That Not only for hilarious. him, Anna Faris is great in that movie. Oh, and what's her name? Um, yep, her. The girl, yeah. The girl she's great as well. in love with. She's yes. wonderful. Smoking Aces is right after that. The Nines, which is a weird movie. It's got Melissa McCarthy in him and a couple other people. That one feels experimental. Mm-hmm. Um, he apparently was in My Boys the TV show for one episode. Definitely Maybe. Oh, that's right. Isn't oh, the with what's her name? coming up pretty I quickly here, too? I hate Definitely uh, Maybe. Really Chaos Theory. The oh, that's the one where he kind of goes crazy. I remember that one. Mm-hmm. Adventureland is in 2009. Mm-hmm. Then it's X Men Origins Wolverine. Yeah. Oh, God, His first that's portrayal right. of Wade Wilson, oh, right. Deadpool, yeah. Yeah. which fucking sucked. Yeah. Not him, but just the yeah. fucking He did movie. the best he could with what he, he was given. He did the best he could. They all did. Mm-hmm. Really? Yeah. <laughs> right after that is The Proposal, mm-hmm. yeah. which I, I mean, I like. I like Sandy Bullock and I like Ryan Reynolds, and it's not the greatest it movie in the world, place. but it's got yeah. its moments and it's got its place. As rom coms go, it's not yes. terrible. Mm-hmm. Then we get to Barry, mm-hmm. 2010. That's mm-hmm. where we're at right now. Right after this oh. is Green Lantern. <laughs> Yeah, and the change, change up, and the change up, yeah. and then safe house. Yeah, and then it's then it's all over the place. The turbo. I mean, when you think about it, Green Lantern, like right after this, I mean, Green Lantern was a multi million dollar, hundred million dollar yeah. budget, and it probably. Was awful. True, right? But, I mean, but, it's a big studio. Yeah. We're gonna put a franchise put, on your shoulders. Yeah, yeah. they put him yeah. in charge of, and, or you know, mm-hmm. or, right? And, which was which I was all for. I'm like, Ryan Reynolds is gonna do a fucking superhero movie. I'm in. Well, it had to, yeah. that had to be because of uh, the Wolverine movie, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, they yeah. said like, hey, this guy. You know, has this? You know, he's already been, kind of dipped his toe in mm-hmm. the in the genre, mm-hmm. and we we. It had, was he weird though that he went from Marvel to DC and then back to Marvel. Yeah, that yeah. Is well, I mean, everyone. Uh, Deadpool has a major fan following, so it was like a big deal when Deadpool showed up, and then they're like, "Oh fuck, that's all you're doing with Deadpool." Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it was a major fan. They're like, "We we have to." Not even Deadpool. He's just Wade Wilson. They're like, "We have to yeah. mend this fence." This is right, what's but going I'm saying it's weird that he right? went from Deadpool, Ryan, Deadpool and Origins. Wilson? Yeah. Basically, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. like it's. Well, yeah. it's interesting, what? though, that he went from Deadpool and Origins to Green Lantern and then back to a mm-hmm. Deadpool yeah. on its own. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. weird that... It's, it's always weird when actors do the Marvel and DC thing, Yeah, uh, but it's weird when they go from one and then back to Or the even other. do multiple Marvels. Chris yeah. Evans is yeah. the fucking Josh human Brolin. torch. Josh Brolin. Jo- I mean, Josh Brolin is just bouncing all over the place doing whatever He's he wants. He's two Marvel characters point. now. Well, yeah. That's not okay. Well, and Tom Hardy's currently doing that. He went from Bane, and now he's doing Venom. That's very true. Yeah, but that's Marvel and DC. Like I said, bounce. I know. Yeah, but I'm saying Josh Brolin's two Marvel characters. I know, yeah. You're true. So that, but that's it is, the same but it's also though. different Marvel. It, or at least it was until recently. Not, any, mm, not anymore. It's, it used to be different Marvel. We had yeah. Fox Marvel mm-hmm. and then we had Disney Marvel. Mm-hmm. And now we have Disney Marvel. Mm-hmm. Disney Mega Disney Marvel. Marvel. Yeah. Jesus. 
So he's a good dramatic actor, is what we're saying. Yeah, well, well, I mean, he's given right. good material. Yeah. He's he's just I he got put in that comedy box and had a hard time getting out for yeah. a while. Too. Yeah, because like, he got in R.I.P.D. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's right. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh God. But that's another multi-million dollar franchise. Mm-hmm. Guys, let's make Ryan Reynolds great again. Let's let's. I let's mean, he's kind of doing that himself. Man's yeah. bodyguard. Who didn't see that? I, nope. Nobody nope. saw that. Nobody okay. saw that. I, w- I okay. Nobody saw it. I will see it. Like I want to see it. I'm not, I'm not opposed see to see it. Mm-hmm. No, but, was I Safe House it, good? I safe House and yeah, it's probably yeah. Yeah. your generic Nobody action movie it. at that no, point. But, but he was I, in life. That's true. Life, yeah, because yeah, that was a surprise. Uh, so, but he is a thing. You know, like because I was thinking about this. Like, you know, I think about this often. It's like after under like 40 will. years old. And I guess he is like forty. He's, He's over forty, 40 now. But forty-one. Okay. All right. So around that age and younger, like who are the new like movie stars? People who can, uh, you know, you put them in a movie and people will go see it, even if it's hits Hitman, Hitman's Bodyguard. I think did something. Sure. Mm-hmm. Business. You know? Right. Mm-hmm. And you know, so it seems like him, Jennifer Lawrence, Chris Pratt. You know, these Ryan are people. Gosling. Ryan Gosling. Ryan. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Nobody saw Blade Runner, which is I don't on think that was all Ryan of you Gosling's for not that's going not, to see. Yeah, that's that not his fault. That wasn't his fault. <laughs> Fault. That's but, a franchise nobody wanted to see another movie yeah, of. Because how many people yeah. saw Crazy Stupid Love? Come on, a, a I lot. Did. I love I that think movie. A lot did of well, yeah. yeah. I love that movie. La La Land was a huge La La successful was good, movie, and that's huge. That's built based on like Emma Stone and him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That is the major reason people went and saw that movie. Well, there you go. So yeah. movie stars still exist. Only God Forgives is an anomaly. We should all forget it. Dr- uh, drive, uh, drive did uh, financially drive. very well, yeah. in addition to critically well. So, all right. So this movie. Uh, Wait, what buried. movie? What we? Buried. Okay. All right. Mm-hmm. So he's buried in a box. The guy's. He's a. Uh, so he, he drives trucks. I guess in Iraq. This For is CRT. during uh, mm-hmm. Operation Iraqi Freedom. Yep. Because this is in 2006. Is when this movie takes place. Right. March so 2006. This is uh, yeah, a movie mm-hmm. based on the the fears. I think that uh, what was the guy's name? I can't. I was going to say Paul Conrad Foley, but it wasn't. Oh, what? The guy who was uh, kidnapped and beheaded in Iraq. Oh. Which one? Yeah, which one? The first one. James. <laughs> yeah. uh, God, I can't remember oh, his I name. And I'm t- I know who you're talking about. I've seen yeah. the video. Ugh. They made a movie about his widow. And, right. Yeah. Um, oh, Pearl? Uh, Daniel Pearl. Daniel Pearl. There you go. Yeah. That's it is. Uh, so I think like it's building off of Holy the anxiety God. of that, right? Mm-hmm. Like this is uh, yeah. Americans go over as just contractors and they have nothing to do with anything and they get uh, abducted and then you know mm-hmm. something terrible happens. Yeah, this becomes. I mean, it takes that as the setup, but it's going to go with. Uh, it's like a. Uh, you know, a uh, hostage ransom uh, situation, right? Yeah. Or a movie that you've seen this type of plot before, uh, not confined to a box, obviously. Sure. But, you know, so the guy has to basically use his ingenuity and try and stay alive, contact people on the outside, see if he can escape from the box, test the limits of his confines. Mm-hmm. And the movie tries to uh, make this exciting by. <laughs> Well, I mean, initially, it seems like it's very claustrophobic. You're in that yeah. space in these super tight close-ups because it's like the camera doesn't have anywhere to move. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But later, the camera seems to be able to move out into the negative space, if yes. you can imagine this, outside of the box itself and yeah. like actually start doing crane moves and stuff right. like that. Those are around. my favorite shots. Oh, there's some Love camera shots, shots that I don't agree with. All right, there's one camera shot I don't agree with. Some of the other Which ones. Which one? The deep, uh, the deep. No, one. it was the one in the very end of the movie. I think more when the sand uh, is going to come in. You know how there's that hole in the box near his legs? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Where it kind of it's a it's a faster moving shot where it moves in, goes in, turns right, oh, and then that goes one up his weird. body. That one's a weird oh, shot. It feels to me. out of place. Is I don't it CG. I didn't know what I was looking at. I didn't initially either. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because yeah. it starts out weird and it goes in. That one it feels weird. To it does. Me. It does I not fit with the rhythm of the movie. No, that's for all sure. the it's like the that. slow pullouts when he's kind of like got just the phone light on his face and he's mm-hmm. laid down and they just yeah, slowly pull favorite. out. Those are really good. Mm-hmm. I like those. Yeah. There were a couple of shots or, or at least one early on where I was like, man, that camera operator is on his game because mm. it was through like a slot that in, one was the, yeah. in, in, in between the boards. Yeah. yeah. And, the, you know, we were watching that one on for a while and it was able to like keep him centered up mm-hmm. in there. Yeah. It reminded me. OK, I know I bring this up all the time, but it reminded me of in Split. 
it when like you s- when oh. in the locker like, with the locker yes. scene yeah. yes. where like James McAvoy standing like a good eight feet back from the locker and his eyes are lined up like perfectly through the locker yep. slots. Um, it reminded me of that because like that that like s- that like crack through the boards like you can see part of like Ryan Reynolds' mouth and like the phone light and that's about it. But it's mm-hmm. lined up like just enough that you can get a sense of what's yes. happening. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it holds on it because that mm-hmm. sh- that shot runs like more than a minute probably in length. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, that's a, where your actor is like, can't move. Mm-hmm. You got to emote and do all this stuff, but you can't and actually You have to emote move. through this tiny portion of your face. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so we can yeah. see it. There was a couple of uh, trick shots I thought were pretty clever where the camera would start on, uh, I don't know, pick it up, profile side of him lying down. And then it would swing around slowly, like down his body to his feet, mm. and then come up the other side where I'm like, oh, this is where you got the people like putting the fake wall in when the camera's not looking. And yeah. So when it would come around to the the other profile shot, the wall was there. I'm like, yeah, clever. Right. I know or there's you, a lot or, of like little trick shots like right. that. Or at least the, where it feels like there's like a hole between Ryan Reynolds' legs and the camera's up in it and where it can do the whole it starts on his face and then goes like upside down and then goes to the upside down shot of his legs Mm -hmm. shots like that like the intricacies of it is pretty cool there's a shot in you ever seen the vanishing yes I think, I think so. so. The Vanishing. Well, there were two of them. There's a foreign one, and then there's the, or sorry, it's Dutch, and then there's the American remake with uh, Kiefer Sutherland and mm-hmm. Jeff Bridges. But if I remember correctly, it had, I'm wondering if that was the first time I saw that shot where you're in a box with somebody and they wake up and, you know, they get the light, and then the camera does like a 360 in the box with them. Where it's like, oh, I don't know how they're pulling this off, yeah. but, you know, because there was something like that they did in this where the yeah. camera flipped over like 180 degrees mm-hmm. and you could see like, you know, from his head and then it flipped over and then you could see his feet. And you're mm-hmm. like, well, how do they have enough room to do this? Yeah, I'm wondering how much digital magic. is in stuff like that. In the document, there's a making of documentary in this Blu-ray of like how they made the movie. And there's a part where they literally like one of the crew looks at the camera and goes, I'm going to show you today how an actor can flip like his head to where his feet are in this box. And like they show like how <laughs> they taught him how to like choreograph, how to like move your legs like this and then flip your torso around like this. And then you can yeah. flip around in that box. So wow. like it can be done. Yeah. Cause we're saying yeah. this is about like what it's maybe four feet wide. Maybe about that. Yeah. They, I'm sure they say the dimensions like, on I'm there. Sure they did it. Yeah. Well, it, it wasn't in English. I had to like what, read oh, subtitles uh-huh. while yeah, I sure, was yeah. like watching it because this movie was made in Barcelona and mm. by all Spanish speaking crew. So, but they uh, they were like over the moon that the fact that they li- landed Ryan Reynolds for this movie. They could oh, yeah. not stop talking about how stoked they were to work with him. <laughs> they got a movie star. Well, this yeah. script was a famous blacklisted script. Yeah, yeah, for it was. For years, yeah. it was a blacklisted was script. And everyone well, read let's it. Let's not say blacklisted. Let's say it was on the blacklist. Or yeah, is it, it the blacklist? The blacklist it's yes. the, that's what yeah. they call now. Yeah. 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 Um, it, it's the list that comes out every year mm-hmm. about the uh, the best unmade scripts in Hollywood. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Things that have gone through, like, you know, the scripts that always show up in, because uh, all production companies have script readers. And they go through stuff and they survey these people to be like, what's the best scripts you've read this year that have not been made? And mm-hmm. so this is one of those that made that list. Mm-hmm. And the, everyone agreed that it was a fantastic script. Everyone just thought it was unfilmable. So right, yeah. That's why they're like, it's great. I'd love to make it, but there's no way we can make this and no way I can get anyone to agree to make this movie. Mm-hmm. And Cortez was like, fuck you. <laughs> yeah. I'll yeah. do it. That's right, because yeah. Cortez didn't write it. It was a Christian, uh, sorry, it's probably. Sparling yeah. is the last name? Yeah, yeah. Sparling? And, but Cortez was the editor, the executive producer, and the director. So, you know, mm-hmm. I mean, clearly it was a guy with a vision and the capability to actually yeah. pull mm-hmm. this kind of thing off. You know, we were actually talking at dinner tonight about, you know, as I said, I'd seen uh, Brian De Palma movie early, earlier this week. And I'm like, you know, they just don't kind of, they don't make this kind of suspense film anymore. But when I'm watching this, it's like you're using, you know, inventive camera uh, tricks to kind of, you know, you're using the camera to put the audience in a in a space, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and doing these kind of editing tricks to uh, or editing rhythms and moments to generate this kind of really intense uh, suspense. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's like I don't know if I'd say it's unbearable. We'll have to ask Holly. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, it's like pretty fucking Ugh. an intense movie, especially like I keep coming back to this. I mean, I don't, it didn't stand out to me the first time I saw it. But this time, like somehow in a movie about a guy lying in a box, they constructed an action sequence. Yeah. Yeah. And with the music of an action sequence, yeah. the editing of an action the sequence tension. and the tension of an action sequence mm-hmm. where 
Uh, he's in the box and he wakes up. And there's a snake in the box with him. We don't know what kind. Was it a black mamba? Black mamba. It's in his pants. <laughs> like it's crawling down the leg inside of his pants and comes out the bottom of his pant leg. And he's like, like this whole movie we've seen him breathing like really hard because he's panicked and he's stressed. And like this is the only time in the movie we see him like almost halt his breathing entirely. <laughs> yes. Where he's just like trying to stay as still as possible. And that's when you know something's fucked because he's been breathing so hard this yeah. whole movie. Yeah. 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 And so it starts off with that. There's that quiet, you know, the quiet uh, build of suspense where, you know, everything's so quiet. You're just like on pins and needles. He's trying not to disturb the snake that, like, takes rest at his, you know, by his feet at the bottom of the, the, the coffin. And so then his plan is to. You know, curl himself up into a ball as much as he can in one side of the of the coffin. Flick. He's got uh, a flask, mm-hmm. so he's putting alcohol in the thing. He's going to light it on fire. Because <laughs> yeah, you're like, what do we know? Fire kills anything. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. You're not going to light your box on fire. You're. This mm. seems like a bad idea. <laughs> you can stomp it. It's a snake. But do you want to take can, that chance? Yeah. What if it bites you? You're lighting you're it down fire in a box that you're buried in, and that's taking a chance. I mean, he technically just lit the like wet sand on fire around it, and it scared it out of there. Like, he but didn't the box started like, to catch on fire when his alcohol spilled. But there's so much sand in there. He just put it it's out. It's a pine box. <laughs> I don't know. Like maybe it's untreated but pine. Maybe if he burns it's the box down, he pine. can get out. Oh my God. But, but there's only so much. I mean, it, like you breathe there, but fire also yeah. breathes. That there. was the problem oh I had. Smoke. Yeah. Every yeah. time he lit that lighter, I'm just it's like, this is oxygen. it's taking up yeah, your but oxygen. But they call man. it out at one point. Like the they when do. He's oh, talking, the guy does. Yeah. When he's talking yeah. to the hostage negotiator, he says, "Stop using your lighter." That's taking up But he lights it up for everything. Like he makes a phone call, and when that light's gone, he flips the lighter. On. I'm just like stop doing that. Yeah, I'm like stop. The, the phone is lit up. Why do you need the lighter? You don't need on? the lighter to see anything at this point. Yeah. Oh, like my at night, my phone lights up my whole room. I don't need a lighter. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is 2010, <laughs> 2010. So he's on like a BlackBerry. Or 2010 something. in Iraq with like it's a still, GPS phone. It's from still pretty Iraq. bright. He's in like four feet. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. it's pretty yeah. bright. I mean, well, I don't think you'd exactly be thinking clearly or logically at that point when you're that panicked. I can't like, imagine. Fight or no. flight. You True. Know? So I don't. Think. But I still would go for stomping over fire. Uh, or just I would not even like it's not even multiple stomping. It's just like get a foot down so you trap it <laughs> yeah, and then fucking use the other snake. foot. To, he's that's all they do. That's why you get it tight and then you just stomp its fucking head in. He's a large man with heavy boots. He can already. He's proven he can curl his legs up to him. That gives a good. I would probably yeah. try and trap it with my foot. Stop Rather, it! I think trapping it with my foot would come over starting it on fire. Yes. To me. <laughs> Thank you. To me. Yes. That would be my first thought. Yes. Yeah. And then just, if I have then to hold it there for like 10... Like, shit! No, if I have to hold it there for like 10 minutes, I'm going to try... Um, as long as you're While you're holding hold there, it. you press down and grind right. the fuck out of it. I'll <laughs> just grind it until like it Okay, okay, fell Holly, off. you say that, but what did you say you did when you found a snake in your actual house? You ran out of your she house, can't right? Away out I of the can't coffin. run out of a box! I'm just saying. I'm just saying. It's easy. <laughs> yes, I picked up my cat and I left my house. Yes. <laughs> and I burned true. it down yeah. and then we were fine. I didn't mm. burn it down because fire doesn't solve it. <laughs> I mean, it can. <laughs> I did move. <laughs> I, call, <laughs> I called my dad. I moved like a week later. But, you know. That, um, there, well, yeah. that would do it. Then. Yeah, Speaking but, of calling people, I have a question for all of you. Yeah. yeah. How many phone numbers do you know? I know my dad's number. Like maybe five. <laughs> yeah. Like maybe Cause, five. Because I can call my wife and Pizza Hut, and that's <laughs> and after that yeah. I'm fucked. So you're saying yeah. your hopes are surviving or banging on the Pizza it. Hut delivery no, guy? Yeah. No, I saw this. There's a TV show on TBS. I saw this. It's they're like all stra- I don't know what it's called. They're all stranded on an island. They've got like half a bar on this shitty cell phone. They finally find a reception, and the only numbers they know is someone's drug dealer and Papa John's. <laughs> oh, your drug dealer's like, not picking yeah. up. He's not yeah, picking yeah, up. Yeah, the drug, no. dealer, drug dealer didn't pick up. He was like, I told you to call Papa John's. They always answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Love but, it. Because I, I don't know too many well, at this point. And Holly, as someone who has not seen this movie before, like yes. we, we got to hear you like audibly react to did some incredible he- moments of did tension. Did you hear my heavy breathing? Well, that no, happens. I'm mostly talking about like, so so Paul Conroy makes several phone calls in an attempt. Like yes. he calls his wife and yes. it's the answering machine. He calls, you know, his mom. He calls and that, God, the scene when he calls his mom is like to me the most heartbreaking. Dude, I'm yeah, no. I can't deal with that scene. I fucking cried. because you know why? That's all of our reality. That's oh all of our God. futures. We are all heading towards that. Like I he calls his cool. mom, and his mom's in a nursing home and has severe dementia, obviously. Oh. And like 
he's like, hey, mom, it's your son. And she's like, who? And it's just repetitive mm-hmm. conversation. Trying to say goodbye. And, yeah. Oh, God. And he even says, I love you. And she doesn't say it back because she has dementia. And that's when he hangs up. And it's just, it's too much on top of what you're oh already God. dealing with in this, this movie. And it's compounded no. with yeah. the way they shoot it because yeah. it's just his, it's his, his eye. And that's it. It's just the angle they shoot it with. And it's just. Oh, this movie, have, mm-hmm. this movie uh, made me cry three times. Yeah. Uh, that was one of them. What For about sure. the, the the fake out voicemail to that? That made you angry. Oh, that made oh, me oh, angry. Oh, I that forgot about that. That was so mad. I was like, oh. oh my God. There's a point where he calls, what is it, like a coworker? Linda? Of his? Is it Linda? Or, well, Linda's his wife. It's his uh, wife's friend. It's wife, his wife's wife friend, friend who apparently yes. does not like him. No. Yeah. And um, oh. it, she has one of those voicemails <laughs> where she's like, like hello, hello, and then like, Ten There's seconds later, it's like, gotcha. And <laughs> Too long. And you know, everyone who saw this first time was like, oh, fuck you. Yeah, Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, I, saw, I, was, I saw this movie in well, theaters, and there wasn't a lot of people in theaters when I saw this movie, but I saw a guy walk out at that point. <laughs> oh, yeah? He was like, that's it. It's too he tense. Like, I can't handle it anymore. He was so invested. He's like, that that's too real. So I gotta leave. He yeah. walked out of the movie at that point. Yeah, it was incredible. No, I, dude, I hear you. I, I had to get up and get another beer at that moment. Yeah, you, I like was, I said, you had an audible reaction yeah, to that, that fake out voicemail. Yeah, I like, was too. Oh, I yeah. was pissed. Uh, <laughs> he seems to have a lot of, I mean, like the call to his mom and he's trying to get a hold of his wife and he's always, he's trying to, I suppose, like, you know, this is like a guy facing his own mortality. He wants yeah. to get somebody to tell him that he matters to them because mm-hmm. he's always talking to the you know he gets on the phone with the contract you know the the, the, the company, the, company you know, yeah. CRT and eventually the state department and the FBI and he's just trying to get someone to basically say that you know they care about him mm-hmm. and getting him out of the situation because so much of it is you know uh, we're protecting oh, our own uh, don't leak uh, this to the media that's what they keep telling him don't don't yeah. leak this to the media no mm-hmm. it's just, he's like this is a situation but what about me just you know get mm-hmm. me out of this you know and it's just every fucking because per- he calls so so many people and every person he calls they just keep asking him questions and I'm like dude mm-hmm. like oh well God. I mean I give I give it up to the screenwriter because I think that's that seems realistic to me like that's no it these is people are, it's so frustrating it's frustrating that that is the reality of it because these people have to know like alright what happened where are you at what what, what happened but before you got beat up and everything he's talking to a 911 operator and she's just like asking these generic questions and not Taking it seriously at all. She's also in Ohio at that point, yeah, so, so it's a little do. different. It's for like her. you know, yeah. you called right. the right. You get a supervisor, place or... and they get somebody. Well, and that's like, doesn't is it the FBI that asked him for social security yeah. number? Yeah, he's like, why are you asking for that? Why yeah. does that matter? And like, that was I was glad that he had the wherewithal to be like, why is this yeah. relevant? But like, yeah, no, I it. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> no, it just it's a huge reflection on the the customer service mm-hmm. situation in well all over the world. But just no one cares. <laughs> but it's also commentary on how disposable we find people in times yes, of war, exactly, right? Exactly, you know, that's like yeah. the through line of this movie is like in times of war, people are expendable. Well, even right? beyond yeah. that, I think the uh, the the call that uh, it's one of the climactic calls that he makes uh, to the trucking company, where apparently, you know, it's the twist is that oh one of the God. twists is that he had an affair with uh, this other hostage. That, alleged, uh, alleged, alleged affair. He says they were just friends. No, I, but yeah, and yeah. I believe that it's the company personally getting I out believe, of their getting oh, out absolutely. of their obligation absolutely. to their employee, where they they know of these two, and they're just like, well, we're going to make this up mm-hmm. for this purpose. Yeah, mm-hmm. I don't think because they don't yeah. obviously they don't think of them f- hanging out outside of work, and that's that, all, they took the, it the, random because they, there's. there's eight of them in Iraq. Yeah, exactly. Of course they're going to hang out. Right. Sure. But even yeah. if that, they don't... I think the company is of the belief that this person is not going to make it out of oh, yeah. where they're yeah. at, yeah. so they have so no have to pay recourse the insurance money to, or whatever. Well, they have no recourse to say, no, this didn't happen because they're going to be dead. Right. So mm-hmm. they can pretty much say what they want at that point. Yeah. Which is fucking bleak. Oh my god, bleak. that, that yeah. scene made me fucking sick they, to myself. They literally yeah. tell Ryan Reynolds... We terminated your contract this hours morning. before you got abducted because we found out that you were fraternizing with another employee, which like, and, and they're recording this whole conversation as like legal recourse, basically. Yeah. But, you know, like I'm thinking from like his standpoint, like there is no evidence that they like terminated him before that. He was never told that he was terminated until this moment. Yeah. yeah. So it is very obvious, like, you know, that this is... um rewriting history to save ass for the company basically yep. mm-hmm. so i just kept thinking like as soon as he starts saying are you okay if i record this i would have fucking hung up yeah and called yeah, no that other guy yeah. if you're gonna no, win, if you're I gonna talk box. to somebody talk to that guy that 
supposedly is coming to find you. Dan, At least talk Dan to Brenner. him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. my god, that whole scene made me sick. Dan's the only one that makes him feel like. I guess at that point that he is someone that they're trying to help up to a point. Yeah, he still drops the fucking ball so he, even hard. he like even he there's, is there's yeah. times because he he gives him the name you know because uh, Paul is asking you know like you know does this happen often? Yes. Have you ever saved any of those people? And there's long pause and like we've a few, not many. I think he says yeah. you know, but the idea that you know there's this is happening all the time and we negotiate for these people. The stance of the United States government is you don't pay uh, ransom. Uh, so that kind of you know it's like well where does that leave these people who are just doing a job or whatever like mm-hmm. you know suddenly up shit creek and like well you're gonna die. Yeah, sorry. But yeah. Brenner is like kind of like we're looking for you, but we really don't have anything to go on. Yeah, you know. So it's kind of, I guess it kind of ebbs and flows with him. It feels like it throughout does. the course it of the does. movie, it it's like there's hope. Down. There's no hope. Yes. There's hope. There's no hope. Yeah, yeah. There's he, hope. He does go back and forth with him on that. Yeah, because I think genuinely, like he does. There are moments where, like, yeah, there is hope. We can find you, and then they get to a point where it's like. Yeah, there's no more. We pretty sure we killed them, and there's no hope for you at that point. Even yeah. even that conversation when they get to that in the movie is just like, fuck, that's heartbreaking. Cause mm-hmm. It's just like it's over, isn't it? But no. it's also at that yeah. point, like you know, you watch Ryan Reynolds go through you know the several different stages of which I always kind of appreciate about these kind of movies, right? Because I'm trying to think about like, could I write this movie? And you know, all of these uh, emotional states or ways of dealing with stuff seems like well, you could deal with it like this, or you could deal with it like this, or like this. Three options. These movies always seem to figure out a way to do them like sequentially, mm-hmm. right? So you, you One, can actually go through all right. of these different right. scenarios, yeah. <clears throat> you know. So he's, uh, you know, trying to get himself out of the box. Well, like what you try and get yourself out, you, you know, try and break something or fish your way or something, yeah. you know. Or, mm-hmm. you know, then there's the, uh, the anger, you know, and the frustration. And eventually the kind of you say in, in that phone call where he's kind the of like resigned to his own yeah. fate. Mm-hmm. Because I think what it makes it even worse is that there's a bomb or something that goes off and cracks the the ceiling of the box. Yeah. And so then it starts flooding with sand. I mean, it just keeps compounding and mm-hmm. getting well, and, worse. Okay, it took me like <laughs> until this viewing to like really come full circle with this realization. But like the bombs that they drop that cause his coffin to fill up with sand and kill him sooner are because he was trapped in the first place. Yep. Like, that's... What a horrible, like, mm-hmm. vicious cycle to be caught in, right? Yeah, because like, they're going after the supposed kidnapper yeah. exactly. bombing there. But we, he's still alive because he still calls Ryan Reynolds yeah. after the bombing. So, yeah. like, it was all for naught. Like, they probably mm-hmm. killed a whole bunch of innocent people for no reason. Yeah. Mm. There's, uh, yeah, because the kidnappers are also uh, characters in this uh, yes, movie. Very true. Well, at least one of you them. Make video. A sinister sounding fellow. One million one money. One million money. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I thought it was kind of weird the uh, the um, like moral equivalency that Brenner made. Like they're not bad guys; they're just like you. They're you know, human beings, and they're you know the people who put. Yeah, him why in is that... he playing that angle? Yeah, I'm like, yeah. but I don't know. But they like, are committing crimes where this guy, you know, like, yeah. this I, isn't... I think they get to that point. I think they. In a very short jump. Well, no, because he was basically like saying, well, like if you were in a, if you were starving and you were in a terrible position, there's no, you know, you didn't, wouldn't know what you would do. And Ryan Reynolds is like, well, I wouldn't kill somebody, which is basically the position they put sure. him in, you know? It's it like, like, the point is, this is not the time to defend them. It's it's right, not the yeah. time for yeah. that conversation. <laughs> right. Really, really not the time or place for that conversation. No. Uh-huh. You know, like he's yeah. buried well, and because of them. Not the time to play devil's advocate. And the yeah. other side of that argument is like when we hear uh, Paul giving his last will and testament, he says he leaves his seven hundred dollars to his yeah. wife. Mm. So he is not exactly wealthy, and he mm. is doing what he can by going spending nine months in fucking Iraq exactly. to help his family. So th- yeah. he kind of already yeah. answered that question yeah. with being in this position. He's like, I'm right. willing yeah. to go to yeah. a war zone. Exactly. Yeah. That's what I'm willing exactly. to do. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Yeah. That's a bullshit fucking yeah. premise for exactly. that guy to put up against him. So Exactly. Yeah. Fuck that guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for real. <laughs> God damn it. I don't necessarily think he knows that, though. I don't fault him... 
He knows they're expendable much. truck drivers. Like uh, he yeah, knows that that know. much. You know. I don't. I don't find Dan Brenner as too much the bad guy in this movie. In, I, the, in that situation, that, that was bullshit. Call. But it's more, it's, it's more not, the movie's philosophy. Right. It's not I think great. That he's yeah. voicing yeah. more yeah. than that character. It's not so. great. Yeah. yeah. In that situation, that was fucking bullshit. But the rest of the time, like I do think he was just trying his he's, best. It feels like <laughs> he's got an impossible it's, situation. It, that's what it feels yeah. like. It's yeah. a man who's hampered by who's been through this apparently many times before and is hampered by has yeah. what he can and cannot do. Time, apparently. Yeah. I and feel apparently like, has never been successful and lies about his success rate. I mean, as but per he's, the ending well, of this But movie. he's doing yeah. it to give I mean it's nobly, like he, I don't know what you think about that, he, but it's, it's like he doesn't no, want to give hope to. He doesn't want to bullshit him, but at the same time, he doesn't want. He doesn't want to just hope. tell him. Yeah, yeah he doesn't want to yeah. just tell him like, no, we're not getting you out of this. He's like, he's got to until yeah. like, he's got to give him hope. Yeah, like, you can't just get that phone call off the bat and be like, odds are you're not getting out of here alive. Right. You can't just do that to another. He does. You're shift, on the phone to another human being. You can't just do that to that them. a little bit once uh, Ryan Reynolds kind of accepts that that is yeah. the possible outcome. I mean, yeah. like a good crisis negotiator, I guess you're kind of or psychiatrist. You're reflecting, you know, what the your uh, subject is right, saying, what they're giving back, back to you. Back yeah, at you, you know, I thought that was kind of interesting. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I took it as you know. You were saying that he's maybe lying about his su- success rate. You're talking about the Michael White subplot or whatever? Well, yeah, yeah there's Mark that. White, I'm, yeah, because the Mark very White, end of yeah. the movie is like, spoilers, I mean, you're listening, but like the very, the last scene of the movie is like, we're coming to you, we're coming to you, we're, we're, we're like opening the casket now, do you see us? And he's like, I don't see you, I don't see you. And his coffin's filling up with sand, and he goes, oh my God, it's Mark White. So like, but he said that he just told him earlier in this movie that Mark White was back in the U.S. going oh, back to college. Right. Okay, He's he full yeah, of shit. Right. He right. fucking yeah. lied to him. Yeah. Sorry, so that's why I was that. like, this guy's just saying whatever he can to placate people for the mm-hmm. time being. Oh, does it, nobody else find the sadness in that whole situation? Oh my god. Yeah. Like, that is oh, the god. saddest. They dug the up for, a dead guy. Well, yeah. no, no, no. The sadness is for like, it's for the, Brenner. The sadness yeah. for Dan Brenner that he's been through this so much that he's not able to help save these people. The sadness mm-hmm. that he told this story to to Ryan Reynolds and that that ends up coming full circle. That's the saddest thing I, that you yeah. can do to both these characters. Mm-hmm. Like I feel but sadness he gave a guy for false hope. him. Yeah, but, that's the problem. Uh, but what else can you do for him? You can't. Yeah, I, I think you have to give these people false hope. But like, I don't know. To like, to not only you're dying by inhaling sand, but you're like the last things you're gonna hear is like, "Holy shit, I lied to you, and we found that." But he guy doesn't. Dead well, now. Ryan, but that's he not known. Really, it comes as a shock to him. Yeah. That's like, a shock oh my to God, everyone. It's at Mark that point. Brown, I don't think you White. can. Yeah. There's uh, yeah. for a person in that situation, you can't just. You can't give that person just nothing at that point. You have to mm-hmm. give them it fall, false hope at that point. I'm I, it's not false hope is never great, but mm-hmm. I think at this point it's mm-hmm. what you have to do for him cuz otherwise like that's giving up at the beginning. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I don't think you can do that. Yeah. And that's- also I think shows something for Brenner that he's just like that he does He's not going to go into the situation and just think it's hopeless from the start. Like he's going to have hope. It, yeah, he's going to try. He's going to have yeah. hope until at a point where, like, and like we said, he realizes it, and Ryan Reynolds realizes it, and just like, I'm going to give it all everything I got until we get to a point where we're just like, yeah, we can't do it. Mm-hmm. But Ryan Reynolds brings up a really good point that he was able to find out the phone number by just looking at the phone sure. and seeing what my yeah. phone number is, and yet this, like, you know. National agency could not figure yeah. out what phone yeah. number he was calling from. Like, yeah, with all the technology kind of they should have. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I don't know the intricacies of that. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. somehow the the number was coming up is unknown. I yeah. assume the terrorists are smart enough to do that, but who knows? Who knows? <clears throat> yeah, Oof. it's yeah. um. Well, I, I mean, I guess uh, as we get closer to talking about the ending, uh, well, let's talk about the the ending. I guess. Uh, so yeah, it's a it's a huge bummer. <laughs> right, yep. but they do the uh, and you, you you feel this ending coming uh, because they do the same thing the Descent did, which is another very claustrophobic movie. You ever seen yeah, that, that movie Alex? makes yeah. me uncomfortable. <laughs> like I'm not claustrophobic, but that movie makes me my skin crawl. Yeah, when, especially when you get stuck in you know uh, they get no, stuck. No, yeah. talking about. Yep, yeah, I don't like that movie. Um, I don't like getting stuck in things, Colin. That's what it is. It's the getting stuck. Part. Getting yeah. stuck and like this is why I never went in high school. There was always the, the there was well yeah there was the like the adventure club or whatever they would always go caving i'm like you guys are fucking nuts yeah. <laughs> like you want to go crawl through tight spaces for fun mm. fuck nope, you nope nope Mm-mm. Mm-mm. 
Well, it has the. Um, it had, I guess these two movies share a bleakness at the end. When the fuck was the descent? Like oh six, oh five, seven, maybe. Let me. It's somewhere on, back in the mid. Uh, so it's at least at least four years, right? At least four years, three, four years. That earlier was a Neil Marshall this. movie too. Yeah, yeah, it was two thousand five. Oh five. Yeah. So they both kind of have like this resonance at the end. There, our hero is uh, facing certain death. Yeah. In a tight, confined space. They imagine uh, this moment where the audience doesn't know that it's an imagined moment. They both seem to uh, get out of the situation and the descent. Sorry, we're spoiling the descent if you haven't seen it. <laughs> skip ahead. Yeah, I'll let me. Uh, yeah, skip right button. Hit that 30 <laughs> seconds ahead button right now. But it does that moment where she, you know, reaches, you know, she's able to uh, get out of the ground and yeah. you know, runs out and finds the truck driver and whatever. And then we realize that this is, uh, you know, a, uh, like a, a dream or something that a she's fantasy having. at that point. A delusion. Yeah. And this is kind of the same way. He sees, you know, uh, the coffin being opened. And it's smart that the filmmaker doesn't actually, like, uh, Holly, did that get you? Did you no, fall I for it? Know. Okay, okay. Was I was, I was curious like, if you fell oh, for it or not. Shit. <laughs> yeah. no, He's I totally knew. dead. <laughs> uh, I was, the whole movie, I'm like, there's no way this is going to have a good ending. <laughs> it's yeah. just not okay. going to happen. Okay, because see, where the first time I watched it, I was like, I was very hopeful and thought I that think he that's, for sure I mean, would I get think out. that's what they definitely yeah, play yeah, on. Yeah. You're just like, oh, wait, there's hope. Like, they're, they're, they're there. They're going to find him. You hear them driving towards him and you hear them shoveling. Like, they're going to dig him up. But the conceit of the movie mm-hmm. is we're never going to leave the box. So, ergo, mm-hmm. he right. will never leave we the box. We are never I going to leave maybe the box. That's, yep. yeah. <laughs> that's how you go into it. Yep. I even knew, like, um, we were talking about the way, uh, is Dan? Dan Brenner, yeah. Yeah. The way he's talking and telling him the story about Mark White. Even then, I was like, you can tell this guy's lying. Like, you could, you could tell There's in his no hesitation. There's no confidence in his voice. You could tell in yeah. his hesitation. I'm like, he's making this shit up, and you can tell. And Ryan, I think Ryan Reynolds could tell. Mm-hmm. Like, for sure. The way he was just kind of accepting it, he's just like, yeah, okay. There's always that where you're just like, well, I mean, that's hope, though. You're just, you're, you're trying to be like, all right, I'll, I'll, I'll hope you're that what you're telling me. Yeah, you're, you gotta cling yeah. to something at that yeah. point, so I'm gonna cling to what you're yeah. telling me, and hopefully it's true. But this, or you're saying yeah. at the very end, during that, like, frantic, like, we're coming, we're, we're gonna be uh, there in you, three minutes. Even just before No, that. when he's minutes. describing, like, he's describing oh, Mark he's describing White. Mark White's story. When he's saying, oh, like, yeah. like even oh, he was a 26-year-old med student. He thinks that he's full of shit because he actually writes the guy's name down on the inside yeah, but, the coffin Yeah, lid. exactly. You can hear it in his and voice. He does. And, he writes it, and he writes it in a coffin. Mm-hmm. Like he yeah, writes it a box and around it. Boxes yeah. around it, which yeah. is great. Yeah. Which, like, I, the first time I saw this movie, I thought that was going to come back to being like they would open the casket and think that was Mark White I thought inside. that, too. Yeah. I thought that, too. Yeah, that's where I thought that was going. Yeah. Because that was the only name he wrote down. Because mm-hmm. like, everything else is just phone numbers. Yeah. I think they're so that relationship becomes a little more honest, I think, as the movie goes it does. on. Though. Yeah. You know, to the to that final, you know, not it's the midway right. point where he's like, yeah, this really is, you know, mm-hmm. that's all we can do, you know. Yeah. I think it's pretty impressive too that like the only actor we actually see on screen is Ryan Reynolds, but like we have all these other voice actors mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and they do incredibly well given their they part. Do. You know, like I think they do mm-hmm. a really like like Dan Burner especially does a really good job of like delivering that like uncertain hesitation yeah. in his voice and that sort of like like we're picking Picking this up just from his inflection exactly. over the phone, you know, yeah. like we're picking up all yeah. the subtext from that. So I think that's pretty remarkable. It is very much so. Um, yeah, we were, I was saying earlier, I cried three times in the movie. I cried when he talked to his mom. That I cried awful. with the fucking snake. <laughs> <laughs> and you were the, sad to see it go. Oh my yeah. god! As, as soon as slips out there, no. As, the, yeah, as soon leaves. as it crawled out of his pants, oh my god! I started, I started crying. I couldn't handle it. The third time when his wife finally calls him. Mm. That oh, I hate that. He's right too. near I the end. Can't, oh I my can't. god. Because there's she's so much so this hope and she's like, "Oh, you're they're coming to get you." Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cuz she knows very little about what's going on. Yeah. After like four voicemails from him yeah. and like like a million missed mm-hmm. calls, like, "God, could you imagine how guilty she feels?" That's what oh, I was thinking. God. How much guilt And she, did she feel? and she leaves she gets into the conversation not knowing the severity of it, and she leaves not knowing the severity yeah. of it. Yeah, because he thinks that he's about to be right. I gotta yeah. let you go. I gotta go. Right They're here. Like, yeah. oh my god, she doesn't like even never know see him again. Yeah. what's going on. I, I'm one of those people who, like I don't answer my phone when people call. Me usually. too. And so now, like this movie makes me rethink that. Every All right, time I'm, I'm taking. Like, I'm officially taking Michaela off my emergency <laughs> <Yeah>. list <laughs> because that's like, pointless. Apparently, I know, like, you can text me. 
You no, know, I, that's my I, thought. Is, so it's just going to be dying, dying, help. No, the thing is, <laughs> yeah, just text me 911. Does that work? Just say 911. Let's, let's establish Ooh, it now. Hey, hey, is dying, movie? dying, is please help. moment? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Copyright uh, 2018 <laughs> Saturday yeah. Night Freak Show. Dying, dying, Look, help. I just hate oh, yeah. talking on the phone, so I don't answer. Is, no, I don't. I mean, I don't like talking yeah, on the phone yeah. either. So Michaela hasn't even given me her actual number. <laughs> yeah. She just talks to me on Messenger. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say we all talk on Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> like I have your numbers, yeah. but no, I don't yeah. even have her actual number. But that's the thing. Like I say it now, Michaela. I'll answer. <laughs> I'll answer people if like I if it if they're in my phone. But an unknown number, which right. is what he would have been calling from. No, yeah, no, no, right. no way, no, no way, never, never. Have I and especially that up. like three years ago, I used to get calls from Kuwait in the middle of the night, like Don't every you night. Hate that shit. Yeah. yeah, it was for like three months. It sucked. Mm-hmm. I have a California number, and I still get Santa Monica calling. Me. Hollywood calls me at least <laughs> once a, at least once a week, and now maybe that. Maybe that's like Spielberg being like, yeah. "Hey, we need you," yeah. but they I'm don't still ignore that. Your I'm still <laughs> ignoring that shit because yeah. that can't be good. Yeah, no, that, that's the thing. Steven like, Spielberg's like, "Sean Tyler won't call me back." <laughs> He's like crying. That's what over I hope. <laughs> that's what I dream. <laughs> we need you, Sean Tyler. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, no, I don't answer calls from people I know, let alone an unknown number. Yeah. Yeah. But this movie, yeah, every time I watch it, I'm like, "Oh fuck, what if?" But what if they're like really someone I know that's like in a really fucked up situation? Yeah, like, mm. like or. Like not necessarily, or someone who doesn't call often. You're just like, right. hello. But not, yeah. not necessarily, Are you okay? Like, not necessarily a buried scenario because I doubt I would ever be in that situation. But like, even if it's like a JC Dugard situation, you know, like what if it's yeah. someone that's just like kidnapped and got their one chance yeah. to call, and I'm I'm fucking it all up. Like, yeah. you know, like I uh, think about shit yeah, what if it's, all the time. Now you have like, to answer every call. No, yeah. Like, what if it's yeah. like fucking cellular with Kim Basinger and Chris yeah. Evans, and she's just dialing a number? She doesn't know who it is, right? Yeah. And she yeah. gets Chris Evans. What if he didn't answer? Mm-hmm. What if you get Chris Evans? Uh, oh yes, <laughs> that's a what better. I like Chris Evans. Evans. I'm gonna Ooh. think about it that way. I'm going to think about it as... Help me, Captain America, Evans. please. <laughs> Dream come true. All right, I'll so let me, let me ask you this, then. Uh, th- th- the bummer ending, right, oh, for this movie? God. Is this a good ending it's for the movie? It's an excellent ending. It's, a f- okay. it's the way it should I have hated ended. it, and it was I, fantastic. I hate the way it makes me feel, <laughs> yeah. but it is a great ending. But yeah. it's the way... It's the way it should it have ended. Like, more, yeah. it, just, it feels more... I don't, I'm not going to say realistic, but it feels more like... In line with the rest of the movie, yeah. Mm-hmm. Can, yeah. I mean, honest, uh, like to be honest though, because I'm sitting there watching it and I'm like, I fucking hate every second that's happening right now. But at the same time, I was also thinking, if he was saved right now, I'd almost be disappointed. It would be because it kind of like, doesn't. Did, yeah, give, it wouldn't have worked. It would it take all the realism out of the movie before it. Because, it would have just felt like a Hollywood ending. Yeah, realistically, yeah. this guy doesn't make it. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. If you're buried on the ground in the middle of Iraq, it's a fucking yeah. desert forever. Yeah. The to, whole, re, to be they're saved, no. Yeah, it's it's a re, it's a realism. On how mm. he doesn't matter, especially you know, you know bombs being dropped all yeah. around him. Yeah, you know? it's depressing once that, realism. Once they release that into the story, you're like, oh, there's no yeah. way he's making it. Like, it's the whole point that he doesn't matter. If he no. was saved at the end, that would imply that he matters, and that's not the point they're making. No, right? He yeah, doesn't. Yeah, that's very true. Yeah. That's a good point. Yeah. Plus, if they bomb, nobody ever goes into an area they just bombed. I don't think it doesn't feel like if they Let just alone poking the around the sand for right. guys say, buried oh, underground. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't. Because you know, it's not like they put a stake down right. where they yeah. buried him. No. They don't know where the like, fuck they no, buried him. There's like, no way they'd be able to go to the exact or, or have the GPS or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's too many specifics. That yeah. Yeah. those like mm-hmm. have those like treasure hunter like scanner things. Yeah, yeah. there's yeah. no Something. way. It, I think I think your audience has a feeling towards that. I'm not gonna say they know, but I think they feel that. Like, there's, yeah. it feels like there's too many specifics that you would need to lead you to where he is buried. Yeah, that nobody's outside of that coffin is not gonna have. In order to be able to find him before everything mm-hmm. fills up with sand, mm-hmm. yeah, I don't. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think we all feel the hopelessness as we get to that point. Okay, so I agree with you as far. I mean, like I'm in the same boat, right? Yeah. I do believe that the movie, to be true to itself, I mean, both its uh, central, not gimmick, what are we saying, the conceit, theme, no, yeah, 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 shoot yeah, yeah, entirely yeah. inside a box. We're never leaving the box, and. That, that downer of an ending is, just kind of leaves you this bleak, you know, walking out of the movie theater where it's over. Yeah. <clears throat> but the flip side is, like, if you suffer through an hour and a half with a guy, do you want to see, like, some kind of catharsis? Do you want to see him actually survive? I mean, I suppose that's why both The Descent and, <clears throat> pardon me, <clears throat> both The Descent and this movie kind of cheat, right? By giving you that catharsis. You know, to see the coffin open up and yeah. hear the voices of the people, hey, you're rescued, 
right? Is that a cheat then without, because they are releasing the pressure then. You They're do not, remember though. seeing him get out. I think if Even it's, though the ending is like, he didn't get out. I think if it's true to the character, which is like, what is this character of Ryan Reynolds going to, um, in his last desperate moments, what is he going to imagine most? What What is his... Well, and he what cut his finger off at that, that point. point, so yeah, he's, he's well, you know, he's losing blood, mm-hmm. yeah. right? You know, well, I get that he's tripping a little bit. You know? Yeah, he's probably yeah. going yeah. into shock. Yeah, yeah. I and mean, what yeah. is the pinnacle of that point? If you're just if you're gone at that point, right? You've gone through all this stuff. You're in shock. You're losing. Yeah. The oxygen is bare and everything. What are you going to imagine? What is mm-hmm. the last hope that yeah, no, opens I get up it. to be there? But I'm just saying, it is kind of interesting that the filmmaker is able to give you the sense memory of remembering what it's like for him to be rescued. Yeah. It, it, even it, that, the movie yeah, is like, sense but memory is a good way that, to describe yeah. it. That's but exactly what it is. It's yeah. also, he gives you that, but I think he only gives you that. He, he'll give you that in the moment, but in a split second, that turns and yeah. that hammers. Oh, so that makes it worse? It, it makes so it worse. Hard. It yeah. hammers yeah, like down that ending. Yeah, yeah. yeah oh, it just gonna end bam. Well. It's the, when it does it's end, like, it just gives it more. It's, that, it's the most intense false sense of hope you have in the whole movie. Yeah. And then it just like hammers at home like okay now it's really coming in and there's and it's done it intensifies the ending and that he doesn't get out i have a question for you holly so you you had never seen this before and like we all went into this knowing it was like an iraq war type was the setting for being buried like did you go into it thinking this is going to be like a like a saw scenario almost like buried for some sadistic horror reason or like did, like, were you That's surprised to find out that it was like an Iraq war sort of setting? Um, I didn't know. I didn't know what the the scenario was going to be necessarily, but I knew that he had communication mm-hmm. ahead of time um, because he's on his phone in the cover. Yeah, um, that's a horrible cover, <laughs> by the way. There is so much better. Like, our, there was some beautiful posters made yeah. for this movie, and none of there them were, made the cover yeah. for the DVD. It's so very yeah. frustrating. So just just yeah, they going all, off, of they it. all make Mondo art. And yeah, that's, yeah. that's where just you going see off of that cover. I was like, okay, this is like a hostage situation or like a you've been left for dead situation. Mm-hmm. I, I didn't think it was necessarily a torture situation. Mm-hmm. Okay. I was just curious because yeah. like I, I like I said I saw this in theaters and like mm-hmm. the trailers obviously were pretty minimal because like what can they really show right. you? Right. You know? yeah. As they should um, be. Uh, and mm-hmm. I was just like, I was just like, that's ambitious because like, yeah. not only was like, we were not taking Ryan Reynolds seriously at this point, but like, I remember the guy I was dating at the point in time was like, I fucking hate Ryan Reynolds. I was like, well, don't you want to see him buried alive for an hour and a half then? <laughs> so like, shouldn't we go see this then? Like that's that you're just perpetuating my argument for going to see this movie then, you know, yeah. you based yeah. on based on your movie going experience, uh, paralleled with your dating experience, yeah. you dated some shitty dudes. Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> It's like it's like a it's like a U shape. It like started really high, went down really low, and now yeah. it's back up high. Now we're back up high. Okay, back up good. high again. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, maybe that's a good place to uh, to end our discussion. You're right. Michaela's dating life. That's uh, good very, well, tell you what we're gonna do, listener. If you're first time with us, what we're gonna do is we're gonna read some of your mail. That was cool. Uh, and then we're gonna do our wrap ups. We're gonna go around the table and. Uh, and let you know whether or not uh, we would recommend Buried. Maybe you have an idea of where this is going. We think we do, but you never know on this fucking show. You really show. don't know. You, you never say, know. With, especially with the latest like three podcasts, yeah, like, yeah. you don't know it's been a weird month. how last, we're going to feel about that. Last, <laughs> last week was so random. What did yeah. we watch last week? Mortal Kombat. Oh, yeah, that was random. That was <laughs> that was did not the shake out the way I thought it was going to. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, this past so month. Maybe is tonight like, is, too. Right. It's the most exciting part of the show. You can't miss it, so stick around. But for First of all, is we're going to our false hope. <laughs> <laughs> it could be there. It goes like, we, I hated this fucking. Yeah. Movie. Maybe I just, maybe I just the, hate, what's his name? Tobolowski. Yeah. I mean, that's the, the reason I'm not going to recommend so bad. I wouldn't yeah. recommend that. I don't like that. Um, so, uh, first I don't like of all, coffins. We're going to summon like our mailman. Sean, would you do the honors? Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. Thanks, Igor. Appreciate it. He's got a little glow stick. (laughs) But he's wearing like the rave around the neck. Yeah, yeah, he's. he hasn't He's a raver. seen this movie, he unfortunately. A we leave him buried raver. in a little box <laughs> yeah. in the backyard. Yeah. Oh, by the way, 
How can people Did get a hold of Did we find him in a box in the backyard? <laughs> we dug him up? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. We heard some scratching and, you know. Yeah, it's like, oh. Well, you took some be, shovels to it. Right. You could come in handy. Yeah. How do you feel about mail? <laughs> uh, so how can folks get a hold of us on Facebook? Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. On Twitter? At Sat Freak Show. By email? Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. If you write in, uh, we'd love to either talk to you or read your comments on the air like these fine folks. Both. Uh, Robin Linneman Silverberg writes in. Hello, sir. And says, great show, guys and ghouls. Keep up the great work. By the way, y'all should review Lair of the White Worm, a bonkers with bonkers direction by Ken Russell, one of Hugh Grant's first films, and an early appearance by Doctor Who's Peter Capaldi, a guaranteed conversation starter. I'm sold. I glanced at this. Right. I, I kind of want to watch it. Yeah. What's it called? Yeah. Lair, Lair of, the of the White, White Worm. And it's a right. Bram Stoker story, right? Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry, Bram. Bram Stoker. Is it Bram? It is Bram. I, we're Midwestern, so we, we know, say Bram. That's I, well, everyone Bram. I know has well, said Abraham, Bram. Abraham, right? Well, it's Abraham we're in the Stoker. Midwest, but other people Bram. say Bram. Abraham. Is it Abraham, Abraham Stoker? Bram. Okay. Abram. Uh, Abraham. Bram Stoker. About this movie, Jonathan Holt writes in, writes in and says, I once had a Ryan Reynolds movie marathon where I attempted to watch all of Ryan's movies up until that point, which are 35 at Yikes. the time. What the? Most of them are terrible. I'm sorry. You did that to yourself. I uh-huh. mean, I have to know. Did you watch A Secret Between Friends? <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, or Sandra, right? Which? I hope so. <laughs> He says buried know. was pretty anxiety inducing and terrifying, yeah. but not nearly as scary as 2003's The In Laws. Seriously, that movie was terrible. I don't I'm think sure. I, I will nobody take remembers your word that. For it. Yeah. Now, Marathon, I'm saying like back to back over the course of several like days or like through? one movie yeah. per night. Like, I imagine it was like every time I want to watch something. Yeah. It's yeah. just going to watch yeah. it. I would think so. Yeah. Sure. That's okay. like you ignore, I mean, you're just like, I feel like doing this. You're just like, nope. It's more of a film Reynolds. series, not a marathon. I feel like if you're going to do that, you need to start at like 2010 onward. Well, actually, no, because then you'd have to watch the change up in Green Lantern. So maybe yeah, like gotta... 2012 onwards. I'm sorry, but if you don't <laughs> no, watch you got to watch everything. No, if you don't watch yeah. Secret Between Friends, you are missing out. You have to watch. Right, everything. but like you got to skip over like a couple I'm things sure, after that. I'm pretty you sure you got to take the... in an artist's you, you entire gotta, body. Of right, work. you have to do the good and the bad. Otherwise, you, how do you know how good the good is if you don't know how bad the bad is? I'm pretty but sure there's Linda Carter bad plays with him. Yeah, yeah. That's fine, but oh, then yeah? you really appreciate the good. Yeah, it's been a while. Wonder Woman herself. Just watch all the seasons of. You guys are growing a pizza place. Right. Like, How many could fine. there be? There's two and a half, I think. Is that it? I think that's yeah, it. That's yeah. Right. What? Two guys and a girl in a pizza place? Oh, God, I love two guys and a girl. There's like what? I loved that show. There's like what? Two and a half seasons, right? Something like that. Yeah. I, I think, didn't, didn't Tiffany Amber Thiessen go on it towards the end? Yeah. For yeah. a show that ran yeah. so little, I remember so many promos for that fucking yeah. show. Yeah. It was yeah. promoted to hell and to back. To hell. Like it was, yeah, it was, it was all over TGIF. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Jesus. And I was all over it. Mm-hmm. Con's like, I have no idea. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, Bobette Georgie writes Bobette. it. Bobette. That's, wow, Bobette. It's been a while. Welcome back, Bobette. Holy shit. Uh, she says, Buried is a movie where Ryan Reynolds got paid millions or whatever exorbitant amount to lie in a box all day. But yeah, you feel like, sure. Because the like budget of this movie is very low. Two million. Two million. <laughs> and, like well, was- and honestly, like... I would need to get paid a lot to land a box. <laughs> Two million dollar budget, though. So how yeah. much did we I mean, really make? Go with I mean, like... it costs, how much does it cost for a box? No, well, they had seven, they had seven of them. Uh, they that's had seven, several. That's how very much true. Does it cost for but seven let's look boxes. at it because yeah. you got to look at it. It was like, and I, I'm not going to even say the e word, but um, you got to look at what it will do for Ryan Reynolds as to being the sole person in this movie. Right. right. And to be able to express what he's able right. to do right. yeah. to so show his acting chops. For nothing. Yeah. Yeah. And, and what he does you know, beyond budget, you also have like whatever the take in the movie is. But, let's say, but even them. still, even if he made a shit ton of money, he made what, like maybe a million and a half? Out of that Not $2 million, yeah, yeah. maybe, you know, you gotta, at you gotta, most. You gotta, you gotta pay I can't imagine he yeah. made a lot in this you gotta movie. Pay your, you gotta little. pay your crew, yeah, you know? Yeah, this yeah. movie did did very well financially at the box office. It did $22 million, I think. So, I think so on yeah. a $2 million budget, that's fucking huge. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I it's can a imagine, hit. though, and that he was he, just like, no, let's do it. Yeah. Uh, a team player. And he brought his acting chops. He said, I watched it in the making of documentary, he said, I honestly thought no one would see this movie. Is what he said when he was yeah, making it. He's like, major, I didn't think anybody would it, see this. There, I mean, Lionsgate picked it up, mm-hmm. and it was a major uh, yeah. release. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Even came here. Uh, Pat Nowacki writes in and says, I like how the baddies keep asking for one million money. One million money. One million yep. money. One million yeah. money. Uh, my unfab life writes in and says, I can think of worse people to be stuck in a box with. 
Oh, I w- for sure. I would not want to be stuck in a box with anyone. <laughs> but there are much worse. <laughs> there are. There's there spiders. Are. Uh, and Nick There's Hammond. Just the snake. Just the snake. <laughs> just <laughs> snake. <laughs> Nick Hammond writes in and says, I Paula dare you. takes that knife and just slits her wrist. Yeah. yeah. First, I, first thing. I, I, I thought of knife. that during this movie. He, he thought about it, too. He yeah. did. He, he held throat. it to his throat. I don't blame him. Like, and, like, he was pushing it on a way that made me uncomfortable, At too. what point were you? would you just, instead of being buried by sand, would you just slit your wrist? You No, you know what I would have done? Taken all the anxiety pills, drank all the alcohol, and just gone to sleep. Probably. Well, that's that's you the know thing, what? too. If you just are in there and you can't That's what I would have done. Asphyxiation, eventually. Truthfully, that's what I would have done, yeah. Just tried to like take a nap. That's yep. what yeah. I tried to do. Because that that wouldn't have been enough to do you in. It would have been no, but like to I may have slit a wrist just to make sure the whole thing went home. But if you didn't go to sleep and just your sleep, that's the way to go. You know, like True. that's hopefully, what I would. Hopefully, done. it's enough to knock you out. I would just hope that like I could get comfortable enough to fall asleep. That's yeah, yeah. and not for. mind that sand is. He did yeah. pass out a couple times. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> you just hope that you don't wake up. Uh, oh, so Nick Hammond writes in. Says, I dare you not to get claustrophobia watching this movie. Too late. Oh, it makes me itch. Uh, he says, I yeah. felt I was in that box with him the whole movie. By the way, off topic here, but sitting in with you guys for Showdown Little Tokyo a few weeks back, I decided to sit down and watch The Crow again. And I can no longer watch that movie because Brandon Lee was a horrible actor. I didn't remember him being that bad all those other times watching The Crow, but his scenes with lines brought back memories of Showdown Little Tokyo. Left I mean, out. he's not great, but... No, it's I, the nineties. Yeah, I've I, literally only seen him in the crow, so I can't. Speak I commented on this already, but I'll say it again. I do not take responsibility for your feelings about the crow. <laughs> that is not. <laughs> that's not on can. me. That's not on me. Yeah, <laughs> he's not asked to do very much as the crow. The no, crow is the crow. Yeah. Not at all. Yeah, it's like I said. Brood, it's the nineties. It's nineties movie that never nineties, and nope. it's it's it is what it is, and you mm-hmm. can't. You can't. I don't. At this point, being this far removed from it, you can't fault it for what it is. Mm-hmm. It is what it is. It was made during when it was. Yep. It was cast by who it was. Yep. The bad guy it's has a product of its time. Has forty five foot long hair, and he yep. just wanders around and brood man in just dark brood. gloves and puffy shirts, and it's just that's fucking nineties. Just being man. awesome you, all the time. You just I can't. I, I, Colin, I agree. <laughs> it's a product of its time. <laughs> His name is man. Top Dollar. For God's God. sakes, I mean, this is the pinnacle. Yeah. You can't. Yeah, this I don't is, think you can uh, no, put is, too much judgment on the crow. No, this is the birth of Hot Topic. Just take it. Yeah, yep. just take it. Just accept it for what it is. Yep. Yep. And there just love, love the Brandon Lee performance. So, I think you have to. Now we're going to go around the table. This is the moment you've all been waiting for. The I main so. event. Mm. What did we each think of tonight's movie? Colin! Yes, Sean? What did you think as a person of... What do we watch? Buried. Buried. Bur- <laughs> buried. Buried. Well, you kind of took me by surprise there. Um, buried. Yes. Buried um, with Ryan Reynolds. You know, I guess I admire this movie, well, for a number of reasons. I'd recommend it. There you go. Suspense is over. Um, I was say, put it up front. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, and then backload it. I mean, it's a good, it's a thriller. It's a suspense thriller. It's a good dramatic uh, role for Ryan Reynolds. But uh, on top of that, also for cinema craft, I think it uh, is a, uh, you know, it's kind of, it's a it's a directorial showpiece. It's an acting showpiece. I guess that's why you do these one-man movies. I was sitting there, I didn't bring it up during the show, but I was thinking, you know, like, even just to try and, uh, I, I guess because the, the I think as a director, you're going into this and you're like, well, how do I not make it boring? Right. There's only so many camera moves or camera uh, positions I could take. Mm-hmm. He figures out a way to like, you know, they go never repeat a cam- fourth camera dimensionally. Movement. Yeah. Um, but also with the lighting. Did you notice this? Like he starts off with the lighter. That yeah. graduates to the blue of a cell phone. Right. That graduates to the green of a uh, you know glow, the glow stick, stick. Yeah. and that graduates to the yellow, alternating yellow and red light of an army like a flashlight. flashlight. Yeah. So it's, it's like and beautiful. He is using lighting, you know, to yeah. as the movie goes, like uh, to alter the visual composition of his shots. I mean, and it all takes place in a box in mm-hmm, the ground. Mm-hmm. So. I mean, is it a gimmick movie? Like, uh, you know, I mean, like, you know what? Uh, uh, Hardcore Henry's a gimmick movie and uh, un- yeah. Unfriended is a gimmick movie and yeah. Buried, I suppose, in a way. Like, I don't want to see another guy in a Buried in a Box movie. Because, because it's not going to be better than this. Well. Right. Yeah. It's never going to be better than yeah, this. Because, yeah. Well, when was uh, uh, Kill Bill was before this? Yeah, because there's a well, there's sequence like she's a, Buried in a Box yeah, and a sequence. Vanishing is before this. But nothing was done feature in length, so... Uh, this is the feature length buried in a box movie. Yeah, being, Prefer being, not to being see another buried one. is nothing, you know, in, it's nothing innovative. I mean, it's the doing it for the whole running yeah, time yeah, is exactly. the innovative yep. part. Yeah, exactly. exactly. And I think he pulls it off as well as anyone's ever going to be able to do it. 
I mean, prove me wrong. If you can prove me wrong, I'm yeah. willing to sit there and watch it again. But uh, I think, yeah, you got to see just, you know, for the technique involved, uh, the, those opening titles are fantastic. They're yeah. like uh, the guy who. Bass. It, it looks like Saul Bats, but it isn't. It's it, another, right, it is. Because this yeah. movie's very Hitchcockian. We yeah. should have mentioned no, that, but this Saul movie Bass. is well, like. It was very uh, yeah, the, influenced by, yeah. 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 This um, movie is. Is like clearly very heavily Hitchcock, which I think that's yeah. what brought me back to De Palma yeah, when we were talking right. about yeah. the. Uh, but yeah, they actually the the guy who uh, designed the main titles gets a credit in the main titles, which you <laughs> rarely yeah. see. Except Never happens. Like right. Saul Never Bass happens. or you know or uh, what was it Morris Binder or mm-hmm. whatever. But um, yeah, I would say uh, definitely check out Buried uh, Hollywood. You think? Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, no, the oh God, this movie played on all my senses in all just the worst ways, but I still loved it. Um, it it invoked just serious emotion in me. Um, but yeah, I was I was engrossed the entire movie. It just it captures the audience so beautifully. It's it's I, I really could not. You know what? It reminded me Michaela's first movie she brought um, was uh, the Tire movie. What was this is my second rubber. one. Rubber. rubber. My first one was Monkey Shines. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. You're okay. Your second one. Um, and I remember thinking, how the fuck am I going to be interested in a tire the entire movie? And I had the same thought with this. I was like, he's in a box the whole fucking time. Like, this is going to be the most boring movie. And I was, again, completely proven wrong because it was so intriguing. This movie is just suspense from start to finish. It doesn't stop. Um, Colin hit all the points about the camera angles. It's it's beautiful. It's gorgeous the way he shot it. And I completely understand why it was passed up for so long. Um, I, this guy is enti- is completely innovative for, for coming up with a concept to make this work. I mean, the script is beautiful. The The dialogue, it, it's it's just... It's all feeling. It's all intense feeling. And it was just done so wonderfully. Um, I, I, I can't I, I can't say that everyone would love this movie. Like I would never show this to my parents because they love a happy ending. Mm-hmm. They fucking love Hallmark. But what is with, with parents who parents don't do. like That's just parents, parents don't like general. a grim ending. Yeah, no. Because they're approaching no, never mind. I don't know. Well, they're maybe they're approaching they're death and everything. Yeah. <laughs> because they're Paul's mom in this story, so oh, they don't want yeah. No, they're it. not. <laughs> my parents are not Paul's mom. <laughs> but they know, know they're heading towards that. Sure. No. They're getting they close. uplifting things. No, so I recommended like, yeah. Children of Men to my mom once and she has never forgiven. Me. I know it's uh, weird. Like yeah, when you're younger, that's me you want and no the... country for old men yeah. with my mom. Yeah, yeah, yeah we the, had that conversation. <laughs> no country is a, is a parent it's, miss. It's the line it's that I cross. <laughs> no country is the line I cross yeah. with my parents. I made apparently. that mistake too. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> children yeah. men's a similar line. Yeah. I can it see is, that. It yeah. is. Um, but yeah, I, I I think that for for people that are open to an interesting movie, something they haven't seen before necessarily. Um, I, I absolutely think that you should watch this. It was it was a fantastic movie. It, it really was, John. Uh, I recommend the shit out of Buried. Um, it's a, I think it's a fantastic movie. I think any filmmaker who and, and it feels like um, uh, Rodrigo Cortez, yeah. right? I feel like he went into this movie is just like, yeah, I'm gonna put Ryan Reynolds in a box for an hour and a half, and I'm yeah. gonna make you sit there. And watch this what on the vision, on right? the on the edge of your seat for Man. an hour and a half, and I I, I feel like um, in him making this movie, I feel like he had the confidence to know that he could pull this off. Yeah, and I feel like he really did. I think it's a showcase for the director. I think it's a showcase for Ryan Reynolds. Um, I think uh, it's also a showcase for the cinematographer mm-hmm. in this movie because I think those. Those three key things, director, actor, cinematographer, I think those three, and I, I have to imagine that they worked together very closely mm-hmm. in, in pulling this movie off. They had a shared vision. Right, to achieve this. So. And I really think it is pulling something off because I think other people could try and do this movie and yeah. I don't think it would end up being, I mean, I mean, who knows at that point. But I think what they did... Um, is very good. It affected me. Mm-hmm. It 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 also 
It's a movie that puts you, like, throughout this movie, for an hour and a half, I'm thinking, like, what would I do in his place? Yep. Like, if I got stuck in a in a coffin, buried underground, like, what are the things that I'm going to do to try and get out, try and talk to the people out in the outside world? And I feel like um, Ryan Reynolds is acting, it, it feels real to me. I feel like the things he's trying to do are things I would try to do. Mm-hmm. And I think if you can make a movie that achieves those things, that, like, oh, yeah, I would try to do do that too i agree i think that's a great achievement in doing something like this and it never it's thrilling it never feels boring i'm with ryan reynolds for an hour and a half um i feel all the things he feels we get it the ending of this movie is fucking it's heartbreaking because yeah. i think you um i think you, uh, you know you love ryan reynolds by the end of this movie and you obviously you want this man who he's just a truck driver in the middle of iraq and he wants he, you know, he loves his family and wants to get out and he just wants someone to give a shit <laughs> and to have that ending where it's just like, that's something we can it, all relate to. Just wanting someone to give just, a shit. I know this is the most extreme right. situation, Sure, but it's, to just, it's something you totally but he, understand. But he calls his, like his own house like five times yes. in this movie and no one answers. Yeah. yeah. Ever. And we've like, all, we've uh, all had those moments where we're just feeling our like parents shit won't fucking and answer nobody the phone. answers. Yeah. Like nobody answers texts or calls and you're just yep. like, what yeah. the fuck? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, this is extreme, but it's sure. something we can all relate to. Sorry, I keep your nerve. No, that's right. Oh, <sighs> but yeah, um, you just he he just wants someone to care. But we, we, I mean, we it, the ending. It's just it's a downer. It feels real to the rest of the movie that came before it, yeah. though. And so I can't. You know, I appreciate what. It feels like everyone was on board for that ending as well. And so I appreciate what everyone was trying to do. It's well made f- from everybody. Um, yeah, I recommend the shit out of this movie. Mm-hmm. It's one of the, I think, one of the go to um, uh, an actor alone in a situation movies. Uh, if yeah. that's a genre, I'm making The one man show movie. The one man show movie. Yeah. <clears throat> We're making that genre now. Um, and it's, I think, it, it's still effective. Um, I definitely recommend it. Irony that uh, his wife did the shallows. Yeah, maybe not yeah. so much. Maybe yeah. maybe there was just like a conversation. I'm sure there was yeah. a conversation yeah. about yeah. that. He was uh. probably like, "Look, if I can do it, you can do it." Yeah, because I think at this point in time during this movie, he was married to Scarlett Johansson. I, th- I think uh, during I think so. this movie, it, it yeah. may have been. Yeah. yeah, I think so. Um, and she does not have anything relatable. By the obviously. way, fuck you, Ryan Reynolds, for being married to the most beautiful <laughs> woman in the world. Just just saying. And like, engaged uh, to Alanis Morissette at one point. Yeah, time. fuck you for all of that. But okay, I still recommend your movie. <laughs> Michaela. Yeah, so like I was saying, I saw this movie in theaters. I saw it to a mostly empty theater. I saw previews of it before something. I don't remember what it was, but I just remember being like, wow, that's like wildly ambitious. Like, that is insane level of like I'm banking on some people will want to see this mm-hmm. and I, that that's kind of what got my ass in the seat honestly it was like that's bold it almost seems like this movie is the best possible out- outcome for like a dare like I dare you to make a movie yeah. all about like <laughs> one guy in a box and mm-hmm. this is the best version of that right like, like someone <laughs> lost a bet yeah and their friend was like this is what you have to do now and he's yeah. like alright I'm gonna make I'm this gonna shit out of that nail movie. it. I'm gonna yeah. fucking nail it and it kills me this movie like has like okay pardon the pun has been like buried in like ah! it, like, no, <laughs> like no one no one remembers this movie no one's yeah. seen it it didn't get uh. any awards it got no praise and like I, I'm sure Ryan Reynolds like I mean he said he did it n- not expecting anyone to see it but I'm sure deep down he secretly hoped that like it would like shoot up to the Oscars and like I'm yeah, sure he you know? appreciates anyone who comes to him and is like hey I love Barry right exactly yeah. he's like oh thank you I and, mean, I mean, you have to assume anyone's going to hope their project's going to do well. Sure. Right. Oh, yeah. Right. And, he, and he clearly saw something in this. Yeah. You know? But, like, considering how small budget it was compared to the stuff he had done before, and yeah. it was so tonally different than the things he had done before, mm-hmm. he clearly, like, believed in the script and believed in the project because he went yeah. to Barcelona to shoot this. It took 17 days to shoot, and he said, like, I will never... Mm-hmm. Okay, this movie makes me worried about him because, like, he says that he's not ever going to be the same person again after making this movie because when you're buried literally buried alive like yeah. for a movie how could you ever be the same you got to like, deal with the psychology I'm worried that, that you, he didn't yeah. deal with it I'm worried that he just like shoved those feelings down and like they're going to manifest in a weird way like any day now you know what I'm saying like I'm worried that like I'm worried that like he shoved those feelings down and like was like bottled them up 
and like they're gonna explode in a weird way later <laughs> That's on. Does that make sense? Divorced. Like, I read an interview where he <laughs> said that he it's all like when he watches the movie now, it's like he barely remembers the experience of actually shooting it. it That's scary. Because he was on such a heightened experience, you know, like yeah. anxiety level the whole yeah. time. It's like watching somebody else on the screen. I, I just don't he want really doesn't remember the mm-hmm. experience of right. shooting the movie. Yeah. I just don't want to have like a 2007 Britney situation with him. Like, like all those feelings come out at once and like, he just like <laughs> goes crazy. Like I'm just worried because like he was so blase about how he dealt with it that I was like, that's not normal. You need to like maybe see, seek some professional help for that. But um, he like, especially the climax scene where like the, the sand is actually filling up and he was actually in oh, there and God. they actually did cover him in sand for that. Mm-hmm. Um, and obviously that was the worst part. He also wore a bald spot in the back of his head from like laying his head on the same part of like the coffin and like rubbing it a bunch. Wow. So he had like a bald spot in the back I of his bet. head for a while for this movie. Jeez. And he said it tore the shit out of his skin with all the splinters in the wood and the sand. Actually, like his skin was just like ripped open everywhere. I from can this imagine. Movie. Jesus. Even throughout the movie, he's dripping something whether it's dirt or blood right it's just, there's some dark liquid always. right well and they do say that like you know like their convoy got hit by ied who yeah. knows if he got assaulted it you feels know, personally. like he got hit with a rock is what he yeah. said yeah so he's yeah, cons- he's, he's got a wound when he wakes up he's already a little bloody yeah. yeah yeah so he definitely had some sort of like head trauma at some point um but yeah, like this movie is just this is very formative to my film education as a movie and I think that it does a lot of things people are afraid to do on film now. Like I like I talked a lot about 127 hours and how like that movie is afraid to make daring choices and yet somehow it got a million Oscar nominations. You know, that movie is not daring at all. That movie is very I didn't like um, it. Um <laughs> no, it's it's boring and it's not interesting and like which is a shame because it is a very interesting story that mm-hmm. was dumbed down to something it's not and it, it just makes me so mad to think that this movie like got forgotten but yet 127 yeah. hours got nominated for everything yeah. but on the flip side moon is in a fantastic one-man show movie that did get a lot of recognition um but yeah i would definitely recommend buried i think you have to check it out i think um if you've listened to this episode you know what to expect from it so it probably will not be as traumatic for you <laughs> it'll still um, it'll still gauge you it'll still like, make man. your heart race a little bit because like i've seen it five or six times now and even still it makes you know makes me uncomfortable makes me sweaty a little bit but mm-hmm. i would definitely recommend it yeah when you're saying that about the hitchcock connection earlier mm-hmm. i was thinking you know like hitchcock did do something similar maybe in rope, rope. yeah mm-hmm. formally maybe not subject matter but like he's gonna try and shoot an entire movie that appears to be one shot yeah right. you know mm-hmm. <clears throat> Uh, so that's buried. Mm-hmm. Next week we're going to be watching a movie that's chosen by Colin. What are we watching? Well, we're stop gonna... pointing at Colin. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. Colin's it's Colin, and then it's me, and then it's Holly, and then it's Michaela, okay. and then it's okay. Colin. Hey, you know it now. You got I got it. it. <laughs> got it. Right. God damn it's it! Just, it took you like two years. To it figure did. That out. No, I two understand. I, I agree that like I'm at fault for How taking me two years, two years to figure it, it out. Took, it took one year, but I got it now. One year. <laughs> I understand. Uh, all right, so. Um, yeah, we're going to scratch one off the bucket list. Ooh. I think we've... Oh, it, no. This movie's been a, the butt of jokes oh, on no. the Saturday Night Freak Show. Oh, what, are you no. t- what are you bracing yourself oh, for? Because it's your me. picks make me nervous. You can't wait to see <laughs> this movie. Is it Green it's Slime? The Green Slime. Oh! Yeah. It's pro- we cheered Green so loud. Slime. It's probably going to be Green so bad. Slime. It's probably going to be so bad. And everybody's out there going like, what? The what? Don't worry. It's we'll try and song. yeah, we'll we're, sing the we're theme song. We're solely going by the theme song. That's yeah, it. We, that's we don't know the trailer or anything yeah. about this movie. There may be giant Green insects. Who, I don't know. who knows? I haven't even seen it. That's why I got to yeah. cross oh. it off the bucket list. None yeah. of us have seen it. We're solely going on the theme song. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so in the trailer that had the awesome theme song. In yeah. It. yeah. That's right. So if you're playing along at home, go wa- find this movie, watch it, and uh, join us next week for the Green Slime on the Saturday Night Freak Show. And until then, ladies and germs. The basement is going dark.